artist. I'm a mother. I am light. I am scarred. I am, I am powerful. A student. A creator. I, I am whatever I want to be. I am over 50. I am the sum of my years. I am one darn strong woman. What informs your creativity? Everything, because everything is or can be art. It's energy, it's love. Mm -hmm. It's everything that we see around us. Everything comes from a source, mm -hmm. and I'm part of that. Every time I go out for a walk, I mean, I might want to stay in bed for a little longer. Every time I push myself and take that morning walk, I find little treasures, little miracles. It could be a coin. It could be an engaging with a person on the street that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, something organic that I found. And even if I didn't sell anything, I don't care because I have to create. We were created somehow. And I really believe that we're meant, in turn, to create. And how do you think creativity has influenced your aging? I see people really, really as ageless. I have no idea how you are, I mean how old you are, or anybody else, and it doesn't even enter my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're a beautiful person, you're a person. Right. And that's really, I know it sounds trite, but it, it doesn't, I don't see it. I don't care about these wrinkles. I don't care about this. You know, it doesn't matter. It's the life in me, the pleasure, the joy that I find in life and the people around me. And there's so much to learn. I'm really a student of um, ancient knowledge, Kabbalah, mysticism, metaphysical things, um, spirituality. Um, I'm always growing and learning. And I'm so grateful there's still time to evolve even more. And when you, when, you, when you meet other people who are your chronological age, are they surprised at your energy and your enthusiasm, your <laughs> joie de vivre? I mean, they must be. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. And what do you tell them? Um, How do you encourage them? Oh, by being an example. Come with me. Let me show you this. Come on, let's do this. I find that women, as they're getting older, uh, you know, mid-age to older, have a lot more fear, anxiety, driving, going places. No, you can't do that. The door says, push, don't pull, push. There's uh, somehow they're feeling squashed. Mm. They don't feel like what is that book? Uh, when I get older, I'll wear the color purple. Mm. If only they could feel free mm -hmm. to explore who they are or be who they really are. I wish there was something I could do about that. Right. For me, it's part of a, a bigger conversation that's being had finally about women, by women, for women. It's about women's uh, bodies, women's sexuality, women's sensuality. I'd like to be sexual, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> No, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And why not? Well, you know what? Um, I am of a certain age. What? And, and people oh, of no. a certain age don't, aren't sexual? Oh, no, no. They are. But yes. By themselves. <laughs> I'm sure there are other people who are sexual as well of a certain age. No, but, you know, to find a partner, that would be really lovely. To have a playmate, um, a, a lover, a friend. It could be in lust. It could be in interest. But... Um, it, it's, it, I am invisible to men, absolutely, I, I can tell you. I think this is a really important thing that you're raising, um, and I think that people don't talk about it very often, and that is that the, the, the sexual, sensual urges don't stop at a certain okay. age. Not for some people, but not for the other. Right. And the, the, the feeling of being invisible is not exclusive to you, it's many women. We're talking about women of a certain age, but maybe not necessarily. Maybe women, other women for other reasons are invisible, but definitely as you reach a certain age. I noticed it when my daughter, my beautiful daughter, was a teenager. 
and I wasn't bad looking either, but all of a sudden, they were zeroing in on my daughter. Mm -hmm. And even though when I walk down the street, I give eye contact to everyone I love, connecting with them, and I do that to men as well, but they're not looking at me. And it doesn't matter how interesting my clothes are or how nice I look, they absolutely do not see me, but women do. Mm -hmm. Women do, and they respond, mm -hmm. and it is so nice mm -hmm. to have a smile exchange or just acknowledging mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Just, I see you in there. Mm -hmm. I know who you are. Mm -hmm. You're not that. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really lovely. But the thing is that when I started to become invisible, it was very, very freeing. It was so freeing because mm -hmm. When I would go out, I was always aware of men looking at me. And you know, the, uh, and I didn't realize I was preening, you know, and I didn't, um, I was always conscious of myself mm -hmm. because I knew men were looking at me. Mm -hmm. And now I'm invisible. I can be anything I want to be. I can be free to just, mm -hmm. And do you wish that you would have had that liberation sooner? Absolutely. Absolutely. How would that have changed the way that you navigated life? I think it would have given me more confidence. It would have given me more confidence. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, freedom, confidence, uh, assuredness in myself. Mm -hmm. I don't need anyone to look at me or admire me. Um, it's wonderful just to be. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about sadness and pain? Because, oh. because that's part of, of life as well, right? Wow, it is. And that's something I'm working on now. Um, that it is what it is. And I'm practicing every morning in the shower. That's the one thing I'm disciplined about, the one thing a hot shower and I finish it off with icy cold water and I say to myself it's cold it is what it is it's cold that's all it is it's cold mm -hmm. and that might not make sense to you but somehow whatever happens okay it is and there's got to be another side it's almost as if there's a cultural mandate to only be happy or how are you I'm fine how are you great and then you continue as opposed to how are you really doing? And then be prepared for the response. <laughs> you know what? It sucks today. I'm really not doing that well. And I think that we're not bearing witness to each our own and then to each other's hardship and challenge. And so when it happens to us, we're lost because we're thinking, I'm alone. No one else goes through this. Look at everyone. They're happy. I work in retail part time and uh, the customers are always great. Hello. How are you? How are you? And uh, one woman was greeted, how are you? And she said, okay. I put my arm around her and I said, no, you're not. <laughs> and she said, you're right. And she proceeded to share with me. I, it was like, no, you're not. Yeah. But um, I think I can be pretty um, straightforward with how I'm feeling in that moment. Um, I can be crying, and this has happened. Mm -hmm. Over lunch, I'm crying, boo-hooing, and all of a sudden I see something that's either beautiful or funny, and I can, I can start laughing. Right. Then I'll go back. <laughs> right. No, but that's true, you know. It's, it's, there's something about knowing that nothing is permanent. Buddha. Right? Buddhism, yes. It, it passes, so it's okay then to cry. It's okay to touch your pain. It's okay to put the light on the wound, as Rumi says, you know, because you will be okay. Yeah, all my life I have dealt with uh, panic attacks, anxiety, mm -hmm. since I was a teenager, and it got worse and worse. And I guess depression is part of that. Mm -hmm. Inside, I'd be screaming, let me out of here, let me out of here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd run outside, but I still felt I was encapsulated in a sphere trapped and after years and years of trying to hide that and it wasn't until my 50s I finally got on medication I really I 
I didn't think I could do it anymore, and I constantly thought about suicide mm -hmm. because it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. I couldn't continue to fight it. I can do this. I can do. Couldn't. Right. But, but there's something very beautiful too about being human, you know, <laughs> and um, and I saw through your 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 shiny, wonderful, beautiful eyes that there's a life really well lived, and and and, and that means a full life, and sometimes a life full fully lived has pain. You know, yeah. the saying is, when one door closes, another yes. one opens. Yes. But they forget to tell you. It's hell in the hallways. Yes, <laughs> you yes. Know, that kind yes. of thing. That's that's to me what it means to be human. I love the way you are, and I love everything you said. You are a BP, a beautiful, beautiful person. Thank you. As are you. You're just. I'm reflecting who I'm looking at right now. <laughs> Very sweet. No, really, it's true. It's really true. Thank you. It's hard. I yeah. mean, it's not easy for me to pick myself up off the floor. Yeah. Um, but I try, and I have such wonderful friends and, mm -hmm. and people that will help me and yeah. bring me back to center. Yeah. But I can't always do it myself. Sure. And the support system is so important, you know. Uh, we, it's a very lonely kind of society that we're living in. And uh, people are on their own too much. And with social media, there's a sense of being disconnected and mm -hmm. really not touching people in a very personal way. Women need girlfriends. Women need a support system. Women, in my day, we were very polite, people with authority, uh, had power over you, um, and in the job force, your boss was the boss, and you had to, you know, don't make waves and all of that. Um, now, it's, it's different. In the same way that, you know, walking down the street, the men may not acknowledge you, I'm so happy that sisters are responding. They are. I am so happy to hear that because that's what we should do. We can lift each other up. And the more we do that, the more men will also come and understand what it is to really and truly support a woman. But I think we have to lead the way. Yeah. And you know, we never know what a smile can do to that stranger coming past us. Mm -hmm. You're there. Mm -hmm. I see you. Yeah. Yes.